Hey everyone, I'm Ethos, the creative director of Samurai Zero, and welcome to this month's devlog. Today I wanted to share with you guys a little bit of what we've been working on this past month. Unfortunately, due to the current health crisis, we were kind of limited and unable to complete every goal we wanted to accomplish this month. However, we are still pretty happy with the progress we have made. So let's start with the big focus of this month, multiplayer networking. Being that Samurai Zero is a multiplayer game, we found it very important to nail arguably the most important system of the entire game. To that end, we started working on a networking system that allow players to connect to one another and see and interact with each other. This undertaking is a massive one and actually ate up a majority of our development time this month. Now, one may ask, why focus on this first over other possible mechanics like combat? Well, it's pretty simple. Think of it like building a house. If the foundation of your house is not solid, the house will be built on shaky ground and over time become more and more prone to falling down. It's the same idea with game development. We can add the coolest gameplay mechanics to the game, but if the tech can't hold it up, the experience will not be enjoyable. So networking is a very complex topic that I don't want to dig too far into this devlog because it will end up being a much longer video. Our first test case was creating an IP connect system where you could connect to a friend's IP and actually join a session together. Now obviously I have to point out that this is not how the full game's multiplayer system will function and it's just being used right now for internal testing and for demo purposes. Later on in development we plan on creating an in-depth matchmaking and party system that you should expect as standard of any multiplayer game. But for now, as a tool for debugging, it gets the job done. Once we got that up and running, we were able to connect two people from different locations to one instance and be able to see and interact with each other. The next stage came in the form of replicating our characters' movements on the server and clients. When dealing with networking, one of the trickiest aspects of it is making sure that every player can see exactly what every other player is doing every single moment while connected. As a player, anytime you input anything, movement or action, you send a ping to a server alerting the server to your intention, and then it's the server's job to mark that action and inform all the players of that action visually. Add on top of that ping differences and latency, and you have a perfect recipe for disaster. I'm certain you've all experienced it one time or another, characters suddenly teleporting on your screen, or that feeling of you lagging. These are symptoms of the player not being in sync, and as a result, the server forcing some corrections on your end and other players' screens. This is just a very high-level explanation of networking, as of course, like everything in game development, it is even more complicated during implementation. If you will for a moment, imagine what I just explained and replicate it so it works with every single gameplay mechanic in your game. That is what we've been focused on this entire month. Once we got our basic movement working online, we moved to our advanced movement, like our custom jumps and wall running, and that's when things got really tricky. Here's some transparent advice that I have for any indie devs that isn't really well known. It is hard, and I mean hard, to find good documentation about multiplayer systems. Don't get me wrong, there's a lot of good devs out there that have done it and tutorials on YouTube, but this information will never truly contain everything you need in order to make a good networking system for every type of game. Multiplayer games are not simple feats that can just be done by watching a couple tutorials. Luckily, our amazing programmer Reed has been doing a phenomenal job at figuring out the unknowns and forging a strong foundation for Samurai Zero's multiplayer component. And so with that, I am proud to announce that we have been able to successfully implement a listen server system for testing our gameplay mechanics in an online environment. It was our hardest obstacle to date, but we have so far very promising results. Now, I know some of you may be asking, what exactly is a Listen server? So today, I brought Reed here to explain a little bit about networking and Listen servers. If you don't, if you already know this stuff, just it's going to be very quick. But for anybody who doesn't, I just wanted to explain it. So the way networking works in Unreal, and I just shamelessly stole these slides from an Unreal presentation. Um, the way networking works, well, in general, is that you have one server, and you have a bunch of clients that are connected to that server. And the server talks to the clients and the clients talk to the servers. But you'll notice the clients do not talk directly to each other. They only ever talk to the server. So that's a really important uh, distinction to make. Next, um, there's two types of servers. There is a listen server, which you can see demonstrated here. And that means that it's a server plus somebody playing on that server. So a good example of this is like a lot of old school games like Halo, like old Halo 2, Halo 3, or just older games on the computer where you would host a game and you would have you would essentially be the server or you would be the host and then your friends would join you right so you'd be hosting that game locally that is what's referred to as a listen server and the other type of server is a dedicated server and that's what a lot of games now like the newer um 
I mean, pretty much any newer game like Fortnite, uh, PUBG, the multiplayer, and Call of Duty. Like, whenever you connect to a server, you're connecting to a server on the cloud somewhere, and there's nobody actually playing on that same machine. It's just a server that's running as the server. So that's where they get the name dedicated server. It's a server and it's only the server. There's nobody else um, playing on that machine. So again, there's listen servers and there's dedicated servers. And both of those are supported and unreal. So to expand a little bit on what Reed talked about, we've been testing our networking code under extreme scenarios, such as playing with a high ping of 500 for every player. Now, you might think that this sounds insane, but this is actually what other multiplayer devs have done, like the Coalition for Gears of War, when testing their multiplayer's netcode. Our programmer Reed has discovered a lot of gems when developing the system, and we felt after finally getting it to work, this information was way too important to keep hidden. And that is why we are happy to share with anyone interested an almost hour-long in-depth tutorial and discussion about listen servers and setting up networked character movement. We have spent an immense amount of time working on this system, and we hope that the information we can share with the greater dev community may help a developer not suffer through the same pains we had to this last month. So if you're a developer interested in this information or you're just simply curious, the link to the full tutorial is located in the description below. While we still have to finish hooking up networking for all variations of Samurai Zero's jumps, we are more confident than ever as we move into this month and start working on the system everyone wants to know the most about, combat. So I previously brought up how we had to set up a basic way for players to connect to each other for testing. So in order to do this, we had to create some sort of menu UI to allow players to host and join each other. So I took the initiative on this and took a trip to the Unreal Engine marketplace. Now, the marketplace is an awesome place full of free and purchasable assets created by other awesome UE4 devs for anyone to use for their games. I was in the market for a nice, clean, simple menu system framework that we could use as a placeholder for early testing and demo purposes and came upon something truly amazing. Now, while Samurai Zero uses original custom-made assets, in game development there will always be the need for rapid iteration when testing new features and systems the menu being one of them. So I wanted to find a menu that was simple, but still nice on the eyes. And after a little bit of searching and weighing the different options on the marketplace, I went with this Battlefront 2 inspired pro main menu asset. Now, I believe this is a great example of using store assets. Now, some gamers do look down on games that grab assets from these stores and just puts them all together without barely any changes and try to sell it as a brand new game on the market. Now, that in my opinion is not the purpose of these marketplace assets. They are to help developers budget, learn, improve, and shorten development on any aspect of their game so that they can continue working on the hardest and most important areas at that time in development. I started early this month with barely any knowledge of UE4's UI widget system, and by the end of the month, we have been able to create a fully functional UI system outfitted to work with our game and systems, in part to reverse engineering this awesome pro menu asset. I even did a fun surprise for those of you who follow me on Twitch by live streaming a little bit of me developing this menu system. I worked on a cool samurai customization menu area where you can select one of the samurai in the game and learn a little bit about their stats and abilities. But if you missed it, don't fret, I've attached a link in the description below. It was awesome and all the people who were there really enjoyed the entire stream. So I would say for number three, instead of this value, I would say let's bump it to a 0.99. That's like maxing out the grid. So now when I go to Luna, it should change. I'm hoping that the team and I can do more of these types of streams as development continues on. So the team really loves the UI and we plan on expanding on it quite a bit, using it as a placeholder if we decide on remaking it later into development. But for right now, it fits our needs perfectly. There's still a lot more we actually were able to do on the art side of things, but we aren't ready to publicly reveal them here yet. However, if you are a Patreon backer, you can go ahead and check out our extended devlog to get an early sneak peek at them. I think you guys are really gonna love what you see. So I think that pretty much covers it for this devlog. Again, I apologize for not having more to share with you guys this month. The coronavirus has caused a couple of our plans to be delayed, but we have adjusted and we are still working hard on Samurai Zero. This video wouldn't be possible without the support of our Patreon, and you are all amazing for supporting us, especially during these times. If you would like to support the development of Samurai Zero and see some additional content not yet shown to the public, consider backing us and joining our Discord. Thanks for watching. Please stay inside and remember, always forward. How 
many would this be, right? One step forward. Two steps back. Why keep what you've learned about the city of glass? You tell me as soon as I catch up to you.